And again, it's one of the things that Jonathan, Jonathan and I were warning about. And mm-hmm. I will tell you as someone who's, you know, in that space and speaks at events, I, I've met a lot of people who pitch me deals, you yeah. know, to either code GP with them or to just invest passively. So I look at a lot of deals, not just my own. And I, I really think it's somewhere to 80 to 90% of the deals that were pitched to me in the last year all had bridge debt. And so I Agreed. was like, me too. Hey, strong no. Um, you know, I, I have operators that I, I really like as people and they're smart, they're smart people, but they haven't lived through a cycle like this before who I said, you know, if, if we go agency debt on this thing and have at least five to seven years fixed, okay, I, I'll, I'll do the deal. The returns would be maybe a percent less, you know, instead of 20% returns, yeah. maybe you're like, you know, yeah. 18 or 19% IRRs, which were still really good. So we chose to go agency debt on everything that we did because of that. Um, yeah. But again, it, it's people not having the experience and being short-sighted. And I do want to say this as well. I, I do blame the Fed and I'm not like a Fed basher, right? There's mm-hmm. good and there's bad, but I, I do blame the Fed's coming out early on and saying inflation is transitory and we will not raise rates. I cannot tell you how many mortgage brokers and how many operators quoted Powell and said, the Fed's not going to raise rates. We don't have to buy interest rate caps. Maybe they got um, agency debt, but, but but had the option to do a variable agency loan, which oftentimes the reason people do that it's not just pure stupidity. It's because basically agency loans have huge prepayment p- penalties. So that if you're going to sell the deal quicker than that loan expires, let's say it's a five, seven, 10 year loan and you sell it early, your prepayment penalty can be millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. So even the agencies came out and they basically said, let's do a variable rate agency loan. Mm. You can buy a rate cap, but you probably don't need to because the Fed says they're not going to raise rates. And so they convince you if you're without experience to say, it's never going to happen. Maybe we buy a half percent rate cap or a one percent rate cap. Nobody saw rates going up, you know, as high as they did. So some stupidity, some you know, trusting of those professionals that they brought in their circle to make them think it was low risk. Um, hindsight's clearly 2020. But I think the lesson for all of us is, is that real estate ebbs and flows. If anything we've learned over the last couple of years, things we never thought could happen can, right? A pandemic, a national rent moratorium, a uh, mortgage moratorium in certain areas, um, not being able to evict people, interest rates going up. Like you have to really prepare for the worst, mitigate the worst, hope for the best, but be really careful with your numbers, not mm-hmm. trust your financial engineering and your spreadsheet to to be you know the worst case scenario because it could get worse. And you've got to have more reserves than you've ever had. You should lock in loans for as long as you possibly can. That's easier to do if you're in residential. It's almost unheard of if you're in commercial because most lenders won't lock your loan very long. Um, But even if you can't lock your loan a really long time with apartments, get an agency loan, you know, issued by the federal government and lock it in five, seven, 10 years so that at least you can sleep well at night during your value add and maybe sell it on a loan assumption and not have those huge prepayment penalties. So lots of lessons to be learned for sure. 